what came of that was our foresight started to set in where we were like, okay, Cass, we're bleeding money in this area. How do we stop that? And how do we make people feel like our juice is in more places with the money, little bit of money we have in the bank? And so I think that's where Cassandra and I started to really get creative and strategic where we said, okay, we put a list together with our partner, Bo, at the time. And we said, okay, there's, here's the 15 accounts, the dream accounts that we would love to be in. And so we really narrowed it down and we ended up getting into every single one of those those accounts. Within really, the first with, year, oh cool, people kind of recognize the brand. And then they'd come to our storefront, they'd realize we're doing it right. You know, yeah. we're, it's a great product. And our biggest fear was that we would make a product and people wouldn't like it. This is Startup to Storefront, the podcast where we inspire entrepreneurship through truth. Today's guests are Cass and Andrew Walker, husband and wife duo and co-founders of the cold press juice company, Little West. Their journey began with their wedding, or more accurately, using the money they would have spent on their wedding to start Little West. They got some space in a yoga studio and threw themselves into making juice. Now, they'll be the first to tell you that they knew absolutely nothing about running a commercial juice business, but Cass and Andrew dedicated everything they had to learning and mastering their craft. Their story is one of perseverance and grit, which has paid off in numerous ways, not least of which in selling their company to Plant X. So listen in as we cover everything from the lessons learned in taking bad loans to float their business, drinking coffee in the morning, juice at noon, and wine at night, and why the number one rule of running a business is to invest in marketing. Now, back to the episode. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're interviewing the founders of Little West, Cass and Andrew. Thanks for coming on. Please tell everyone a little bit about your company. Thank you so much Thanks for, for having, having us, us guys. Yeah, our pleasure. Yeah. A little bit about the company. We are an LA-based cold-pressed juice company. We're sourcing local ingredients from all over the West Coast, hence the name Little West, but we'll dive into that later. Yeah. We're known for having a really high-quality product. We small batch everything. We are 24 hours farm to bottle, which means we're basically sourcing our produce and pressing it and bottling it all within uh, 48 hours. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. We're known for the quality of our product, and uh, and we love building She awesome said 24, products. but really it's... Oh, it's we're pushing 48. We're pushing two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's two still days. pretty good. Two we're not days. holding you to it. No one's yeah. going <laughs> to your place with a stopwatch. <laughs> it's it. This and is two. tasting like 49 hours. Yeah. To be honest. When you guys started, so there's a part of your website where you talk about your wedding. Yes. And instead of doing a wedding, you decided to start a company. Can you share a little bit about that? Definitely. Yeah. We, so we had an opportunity to open up our first storefront. And it was right at the time where I kept on asking her, I said, babe, we should get married. We've been we'd engaged, been engaged, for, for, we'd been engaged for, for three years. Okay. I said, so okay. like, what's the deal here? We should, we should probably pick a venue, <laughs> do something, invite friends, have a party at least, whatever. And it was my birthday weekend and we had had a reservation that we had booked at French Laundry up in Napa. Napa yeah. It was like a kind bucket, of a bucket list. list. Such, sure. such a, a dream right. that we had always wanted to treat Thomas Keller, to. right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so we were just, we just were, you know, felt grateful that we got on the list finally to get, uh, have a lunch there. And it was my birthday weekend. And so a couple days passed and I, I said to Cassandra, I'm like, this, this might be a great opportunity for us to get married as well. What do you think? Mm. What, what if we go up there and get married this way we can save money on a wedding, right? We can just elope and we can put a, a portion of the money that we had put aside for this wedding. And her parents had generously set aside set some, aside some money. money. There's three us. daughters, you know, oh, wow. mom, mom yeah. and dad have three daughters. So they wow. put a little, little money aside for us. And we said, look, let's not spend all this money on a wedding and just goes into the, you know, the ether, the abyss and, and let's put it into the storefront and just have a great time going to French laundry. And at the same time, I was looking for a career change. We didn't know what that business was, but I was looking for a career change. Had spent six years in the fashion business was, I really don't care about clothes. I just eat, sleep, and breathe food. That's mm -hmm. really She said all. she was selling clothes to women that didn't need any more clothes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the whole time gotcha. she's like, yeah. yeah. So it just wasn't super clothes. fulfilling. Yeah. And at home, we were just really passionately at the time making cold pressed juices and making smoothies. And we were just kind of getting into I love like how you really say passionately making cold pressed juices. <laughs> <laughs> just like, ah, throw the yeah. camera. When I say passionately, yeah, yeah, and we will, yeah, yeah. I promise we'll get to the storefront yeah. eventually. But the reason why I say passionately is 
we're really passionate about inspiring people around us to be healthier. Yeah. And I think like when we get on a kick of something, there's purpose there. Yes. We want everyone else to be on it with us. And we want to share that the excitement that we have, because if we're feeling good, we feel like other people can feel good doing the same thing. So basically we had an opportunity, friends of ours who have a yoga studio right here on La Brea in LA, they were expanding. They basically told us one night over dinner, and Andrew's like, you guys, if you can carve out 200 square feet from that yoga studio, we'll open up a juice bar. And they were like, yeah, let's do it. So we're cheersing, having wine. And then the next morning, I remember waking up and being like, wait a second. Did we just agree that I'm quitting my career of six years and opening up a 200 square foot juice bar with our wedding money? Because at this point, we had just eloped. That does and sound crazy. And we were like, yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah. And Andrew goes, yeah, I think we should do it. Risk taker? Not risk taker. <laughs> <laughs> and so basically, within six months of that, we opened up a juice bar. So, I mean, it was just totally nuts. We had no clue what we were doing. We leaned on friends of ours who had restaurants to learn how to purchase produce. We didn't even know, like, what's a bunch of celery? What's the weight of a case? Like, so that was all part of it. But we essentially opened up this little juice bar. And the story is, yes, we took the money that friends and family had lent us, some money, a little bit of money that we had put away. And we opened up a 200 square foot juice bar without thinking about anything else. The we story is so good. <laughs> yeah. So I, my, I love it. You just my wife and I didn't, we also didn't have a wedding, right? but it okay. was, it wasn't as beautiful as your story. It was because I realized like, I have to invite this aunt that I haven't seen in 10 years. And then, so we were doing the guest list and I was like, I don't want to invite this person. And my mom's like, no, you have to, because they saw you crawl at one point in life. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that doesn't justify an invitation to me. And so I quickly realized like, it's not our wedding. Yeah. I was like, it's not our wedding. And my wife's father is one of nine. And so it just becomes wow. this like 300 person thing. Wow. And we we're like, all right, cool. We we're living in Boston. So I was like, we're going to get married in Boston at the Seaport Hotel and blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, that's not, that's not close enough for some of the family. We have to make it. So now the location was moving. Wow. And I had been an entrepreneur for most of my life. So I was like, Talia, we're just going to like not get married and we're going to start a company. But I was like, but it's up to you. you yeah. Because her father was more than willing to pay the bill, which was super generous and like very unnecessary. I was like, please don't do that because it's not my party anymore. I'm not sure I'm going to have fun. And that was it. And so then she, we like slept on it. And then we woke up being like, yeah, we're just going to have a small city hall wedding. And then there was like eight of us went to city hall and then went to our favorite restaurants. And so it was like immediate family only. And it was so nice and it was so special yeah. and I our think own. The intimacy of that, we got married, uh, we eloped or got married at San Francisco City Hall. And okay. it was, we each just had a friend there. And because it got complicated, our both families are in Montreal. And then do we have, you know, family fly out? So you're from siblings. Montreal? Both of us are from Montreal. Okay. What yeah. brought you to San Francisco fashion? So LA, he brought me to LA, okay. actually. Okay. Andrew's been here for 21 years. And I've been here for 50, we've been here for 15 together, but he is an actor as well. And so acting is what brought him out here. I chased Cassandra. I moved back to Montreal after being here for two and a half years and knew Cassandra through the grapevine of our small, you know, suburb. We grew up 10 minutes from each other and never knew each other until we were in our 20s. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Chased so her cool. for three weeks. She kept on denying me and, uh, <laughs> and then somehow this convinced her to go out for coffee. <laughs> and then a and then year later, we, you know, we were together a year after that, and then she came out to, I convinced her to come out to LA I finished LA university and we drove our car out with yeah. our dog and that was it. That was That's it. awesome. So what was the first step in starting the business? So you guys have a storefront. I assume you don't have any like commercial grade equipment just yet. Like nothing, maybe you do. I don't we know. Do. So okay, we do. So we, so at first we were like, okay, cool. So cold pressed juice. Cause that's where it's at right now. We're not just going to do normal juice because the heat. We did. There was a moment that we said, okay, we'll, we'll just, we'll do it in the storefront. We'll yeah. do okay. juice on the spot. And we'll have like, like a, a blender or whatever. Yeah. Uh, like a, yeah. Like, like a, a smoothie a box. Or lane, sure. Whatever. You know, we didn't even know that things had to be okay. certified and like when I say we knew nothing, I mean, we knew nothing. Thing. <laughs> there was no like let's That's hire a best. consultant and figure out how to build this and set ourselves up for success it was also it was a like new industry survival. right the mm -hmm. yeah the players were pressed juice, right. Moon right. juice. and moon juice mm -hmm. really and beverly hills juice obviously uh, yeah, yeah. The, the ogs she's yeah. amazing yeah she's like amazing cash only doesn't Come want to scale on. but i love her her ethos of like literally she doesn't throw anything away yeah. no trash it's, I mean, really, it's great really inspiring yeah it is it but is. i'm like can you just take a credit card please like i get it. i get i get the whole thing but like please yeah you're right so not many players at so the not time many players and then we started doing our research into juice and realized well if we want to be competitive and, and have the highest quality product which was really important to us we have to do cold pressed juice and then we start looking into cold pressed juice now what is cold like, pressed juice to the novice me in yes. the room <laughs> what is what's so, what does that mean 
Cold press juice is basically where the juice has never come in contact with heat. Heat is what compromises the quality and the integrity of the nutrients. So the vitamins and the minerals and the um, enzymes, if you have cold produce and it goes through, we temperature control the entire process. So the produce, the washing of it, it goes into a grinder. That's, just, a, that's just another layer. Another though, layer. It's yeah. like to keep the produce cold. That's kind of our little secret, what we do. Okay. We're, we're um, crazy. Everybody knows it now, but yeah. yeah what kind we're, of we're heat really, are we talking about here? So the motor, the heat from a motor of a juicer. Oh, so you know how like okay. when your blender is going for a long time, yeah. it gets yeah. really hot? Sure. So imagine that okay. when you're juicing it and the heat is what, Kittles and you get the foam the if you get juice on the yes, spot. You okay. get the foam on the top that's of your like glass. That's oxidization. oxidization. And that's oh. just from the, the high rotation that's speed. I've never podcast. known what that was from. I just so thought it much. was. Yeah. So you see that? That's a no no. It just cuts the shelf it's life down. Loss. You have to drink that immediately. If you're going to. Okay. If it's nutrient loss. Okay. Gotcha. But if you, you can't take that. Is it because the heat now starts a process? Like it starts to process it? Like the heat basically cooks it? The heat just initially, you know how when you talk about pasteurization of like a Tropicana orange juice? Sure. sure. You're basically heating and you're starting out that, yeah. all of the nutrients of the Got orange it. juice. So you end up with, you know, yes, it'll show vitamin C and stuff on there. But really, it, once something goes through pasteurization, you're not so the slower the, the grading wow. process, and then what happens is, you know, lots of different technology, different systems that do it. But essentially, it's a cheesecloth that you then have to Press. cold... Uh, presses that press that and then the juice comes out the bottom so you want it a slow grading process of the of the fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and as companies get larger what they tend to do is to cut back on costs they'll do all the kale all the spinach and they'll they'll fill by percentage yeah, it gets and so it's still in. technically okay. cold pressed but what we have always done from the start of our business is we small batch. That's just also going back to, that's the only way we knew how to do it. And even though we went even Which goes back with to the first piece of equipment that we bought. Yeah, yeah, this, going back to the question. Yeah, we did realize if we want a cold press and, and really put out a quality product, number one, we have to source the best ingredients. So we spent weeks meeting farmers at the Santa Monica Farmer's Market, talking to produce purveyors and figuring out which farms do we want to work with and source from? Because we didn't want something to sit for two weeks and then juice it. It was all about the quality. And then on the other hand, what's the process? So we found this machine called a Good Nature X1, and it's this 500-pound industrial thing. You know, How did press. we find it, Cassandra? Do you remember we, that story? We were, <laughs> at, we were at Moon Juice. And because Sitting no in one, our car out no front one, of Moon Juice, okay. pep talking each other on how we're going to extract the information from, from the, the store, store from without the store clerk. becoming being suspicious. Because it was such a it was such a hush hush industry. industry no one at the wanted time. to talk about it. Wow. And everyone had their secretive ways so not of not very doing, collaborative. Not very collaborative. No. Okay. So we went in, and they have this swinging door. <laughs> It's really funny because our best friend is the CMO for, for Moon, Moon Juice, Juice now. right now, and so uh -huh. it's just really funny. But so we're basically like peeking in as the sliding door opens and closes, trying to get a peek of the machine. That's <laughs> yeah, back one there. person's asking about and while I'm asking about talking, ingredients and, and juices, I think and I peeked in and I was like, it says Good Nature on there. So then we're googling Good Nature, trying to figure it out. Turns out we ended up finding the company, and we found this machine. But once we realized what this huge investment for us, we ne I mean we didn't have the money to. We were like, what are we going to do? But then. We like we can't put this in our 200 square foot juice bar because this it's, is. It has about a footprint of uh, it's probably about five and a half feet by five and a half to six <laughs> it's feet. Huge. And it's how much space did feet. you have in your juice bar? 200, 200 square okay, feet. Okay, so okay. So. And this machine it produces you can do up to around 3,000 juices a day on this machine, which considering the size of it doesn't seem like that much almost. But it goes back to how delicate of a procedure it is. But we because of the hot yoga studio that we were partnered next to, we knew that we had to have a, a, like a volume, oh, high a volume, volume, high yeah, volume exactly. machine. We had a built in clientele. Mm, That's yeah. what gave us the confidence to initially open the space was that it's a, we knew that next to the hot yoga studio, we would immediately have customers yeah, if yeah. we were putting out a good product. There. Right. So the machine cost about $25,000, then the shipping costs and all the, the add-ons Which was not an expense whatnot. we knew right. that we were going to have to spend. We thought we'd spend like maybe $2,000 on then a Then we juicer. were like, where are so we going to store this machine? dress money gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's it. laughs> Lucky for yeah. us, I never envisioned myself in a wedding dress, so we were, we were fine on that. I yeah. borrowed a dress and shoes from my best friend. <laughs> 
So did you have to do the math on, okay, so this costs 25 grand plus shipping. We can churn out 300 juices per day. Did you have to do the math? 3,000. Like 3,000. And you were like, okay, how long until we pay this off? How many customers do we have to do a day for that? And did it I all wish, of a sudden? I wish we, we had. Would've okay. had. We would have, We yes. did absolutely none of that. No. <laughs> we were just like, let's it's do it. It's probably smarter. It, it, obviously not like smarter, but it's it, to some extent, it's better for the entrepreneur to not do that. Because there's a, there's a real belief right? There's the key ingredient around this is going to be fine. Every moment that we <laughs> felt, this is bliss. Yeah. Yeah. every yeah. moment that we felt like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? We need to stop. Then something really positive would happen that would kind of catapult us to the next level. And then we're like, oh, well, it feels right. I guess we just keep going with it. Well, that was after and the smoke was... cleared. Cause the very beginning, the first, I would say six months was just us keeping our heads above water. I was juicing at nighttime. So we found a place to house this juicer. Mm -hmm. yeah. The X1. Um, the X1. X1, yeah. <laughs> we... X1 3000. Which, by the yeah. way, the company Good Nature, right around the same time, they're an unbelievable company. And they now have podcasts. They have uh, blogs. They do newsletters. And they've really changed. They're doing countertop for homes now, for cafes. So they've really changed. They've made it super they've made approachable it accessible. and accessible yeah. to everybody yeah. who wants to start a juice bar. Nice. Yeah. From... The At press juiceries of the world, right. the sujas yeah. of the world to, you know, the, the local juice, juice bar owner. And we have to give credit where credit is due because at the time, Cassandra and I did have a partner and he owned a couple restaurants, the Churchill, the Hudson, uh, his name is Bo Laughlin. And Bo had given us access to the bakery at the Churchill down on third street. It was to, at the Orlando hotel and it was this like hundred square foot. It was tiny on the second floor of a hotel bakery kitchen. And that was our very first. That was our kitchen. first juicing kitchen. And we would, I'd show up at the juicing kitchen and accept the produce, you know, go through all the produce. And then as the night would wind down, some of the lion cooks would come meet me upstairs and we would juice from 11, 12 o'clock at night all the way through till about three o'clock in the morning. I would drive the juices to La Brea. Cassandra would meet me there at 4 30 in the morning five o'clock in the morning stock the fridge oh, wow. stock the fridge you head home. i'd high I'd five open the her <laughs> and then the i'll store. be like, I'll, I'll see you i'll see you tonight yeah. wow and she would work the store and we, we did that for almost six months what was this like for your relationship not the silence in the room yeah. maybe <laughs> good we've always spent a lot of time apart i think just by nature of what andrew does for a living and we're okay. very independent we're good independently and we're better together so it was fine honestly like there, we're we are great communicators and i think there is something true to absence makes the heart grow fonder you know i, I, yeah, I definitely totally. think and and also we're very passionate people in our own respects and yeah and i love watching her just be in her element and she's great with customers great with customer service she's customer facing I'm not customer facing. I don't have a lot of patience. I have. Well, you are a, customer have, facing. We just want to have you handle customer service. Customer <laughs> service. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm just not good with the rude customer. I just be like, just buy the juice, man. You don't want the juice. Don't take. Yeah. Don't and have the juice. Like, <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. And I was like, and that was a very nice way of, of putting it. But Andrew, you know, it's look. The, this is, you know, people listening can't see me pointing to the product, but. It's a labor of love. And mm -hmm. I think that it's not something, we didn't hire formulators and be like, hey, we wanna make money in this industry and so create four SKUs for us that we can just crank to market. Right. We created a juice bar out of our passion for wanting to share a product that we loved with our community. And we wanted to inspire people in our community to be a little bit healthier. And we never came to open the store and we were like, everyone do a three day cleanse and everyone needs to be juicing. We were like, have a, we were the first juice company to have a coffee program mm. so we were like have a coffee in the morning have a juice stump have town. wine at night yeah we started, we started stump with stump town originally yeah. wine and at night i like that that's good I mean, it's, it's a food group in my in, in our hey, family so. yeah welcome to our house <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and we made juices for cocktails as well like we yeah like, i can oh. see the beet juice being i mean a lot of the well the ones yeah. i've had so far i'm like oh this is the one you well that was no, the original this, cocktail tequila mixer i could definitely see this like, is a sweeter the aspect greens. of it absolutely yeah. Yeah. what l liquor would you pair with this tequila Te tequila yeah that's my thought of course vodka goes with everything yeah really tequila and then a lot of these mixologists have done some really interesting takes on our juices as well like add anise flour to the top and then you know with the clover there was one matthew bianchi and yellow who's an incredible mixologist here in los angeles he the eat, did one eat your drink 
Is that him? Eat yeah. your drink. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I know Matthew. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's awesome. He he did something cool would, with the clover. Yep. He did it with gin. He did our clover with gin. And just so the listeners can hear out there, the clover has kale, cucumber, celery, spinach, pear, cilantro, mint, and lime. So when you have that on the menu with a mixologist, it sounds like there's a lot, you know, sure. a lot of juicing that they're doing on the side, but really it comes from the product, which is great, very convenient. But then he would add, he added gin. He did some, uh, like a licorice liqueur in there, I think. And then okay. he did a nice flower we on the top. We could probably just ask him to send us But <laughs> interesting takes on things. Yeah. Like the beet juice, for example, there, there's mixologists at hotels that turn this into a, 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 a beet Bloody Mary. Oh, interesting. Awesome. Which is interesting. Yeah, yeah which yeah. I, I had only heard that a couple years ago. So speaking after. of this, like as you guys are entering the market, you have your hot yoga fanatics, mm-hmm. right? And so you have that crowd immediately. But at some point you start thinking about like, how do we get into stores or distribution or even the mixology game? So what was that like for you guys? Was it natural or was it like we need to be in stores here? It was natural. Well, the first customer we had was Alfred Coffee. Okay. Um, they had opened up the day before we That's did a good their customer first location. To have. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Customer, yeah. yeah, and so they're great. But we had a three-day shelf life at the time, and okay. so managing any product with a three-day shelf life that is perishable, which means that it needs to stay refrigerated or else it will spoil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's very strict temperature regulation. It was pretty much impossible to manage. So we did start working with coffee shops. So we started first working within our first three months of being open, we started working with Alfred Coffee. And at the same time, we, oh, we did Coachella. Yeah. We did Coachella. So within our first year, Coachella was like, hey, can you guys be the juice company for Coachella this year? So we opened in January. That's awesome. Flash to like March planning for April Coachella. And we're like, yeah, at this time, first of all, we didn't even know what was happening at this point, but because we were just trying to- Hunkering down yeah, and just making away. juice, yeah. But we were like, oh yeah, there was no world of no. It wasn't like, oh, we don't know if we can do that. It was like, absolutely we can. And then we're like, we said yes to everything Everything. and everyone smart and i think what ultimately what came of that was our foresight started to take you know to set in where we were like okay Cass, we're bleeding we're bleeding money in this area how do we stop that and how do we you know make people feel like our juice is in more places with the money little bit of money we have in the bank and so i think that's where cassandra and i started to really get creative and strategic where we said, okay, we put a list together with our partner, Bo, at the time, and we said, okay, there's here's the 15 accounts, the dream accounts that we would love to be in, the Soho houses of the world, and uh, a couple hotels, the Mondrian, the uh, Chateau Marmont, you know, and a couple other coffee shops, the Alfreds of the world and stuff. And so we really narrowed it down, and we ended up getting into every single one of those those accounts within really, the first with, year but this is yeah. the thing is we recognized early on so alfred coffee you know they were just getting started but then coachella really gave us a little bit of exposure street cred. and street yeah, cred where yeah, we were sure. like oh cool people kind of recognize the brand and then they'd come to our storefront they'd realize we're doing it right you know yeah. we're, it's a great product and our biggest fear was that we would make a product and people wouldn't like it but what i was just going to say is that we essentially ended up just saying we have no money to spend so all these juice companies were starting to open up and they were just putting billboards up and opening storefront after storefront and juice like, served here yeah who was making a big quote-unquote yeah. splash you know How sure. compete with these, sure. these companies and so we just decided let's just do what we do best which is make a great product and try to approach our dream accounts Mm -hmm. and if we can get into those then that will at least give the allure that we're in a lot of places and then hopefully our business will kind of we were never good at raising capital that's one thing Cassandra and I are not did you try and and it just didn't work out or was it something like it was just so uncomfortable so when we did try we put a great deck together after being open for six months we raised what we thought we would need to scale for the next two three years that money was soaked up in a matter of six months. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Six <laughs> months. Yeah. yeah. And two weeks before the, the six months was up, we didn't know that we were going to be at the end of the, the line. We were just mm. still making juice and we didn't have somebody who was looking at the for, you know, forecasting for looking us at the P&Ls and, just looking and, P&Ls and, and kind and, of breaking it down. Sure. So it was so really it just, just was too little too late at the time. So when we were already in kind of a, desperate place. We didn't want to go back to investors and be like, guys, we're desperate. We need money here. But we did need money. <laughs> but we needed money. Yeah. And we made it happen. We ended up, you we know, did do, we did raise money, finding ways but it was to never, it was just never enough or it wasn't yeah. at the time enough. So we've always had, we were always like, we're like, we the took some bad loans. I mean, to be straight up, we, we took a couple really bad loans and 
we were at the mercy of the interest rates. And we thought that that was going to be a band-aid for us for, you know, until things started picking up again. And, and obviously, you know, you lose a couple of your key accounts to the juice served tiers of the world, and the press juiceries of the world that are buying out your product, paying the customer to remove you off, this, off the shelf, so buying you out and then free filling them. And so we lost out in a couple of those customers. It got crazy in our industry all of a sudden. Yeah. People yeah. would joke around, it's like, oh, the Juice Wars of LA, 2015, you know, the Juice Wars. And Meanwhile, there's you and me just being like, do you want to come to our kitchen and see it? Because people are like, how is your product so vibrant? How is it? And we're like, you got a small batch it. You got a temperature control. You got to juice it with love. <laughs> you know, like our whole thing was so feeling driven and, and uh, just who we are. Were you guys just not like pricing it correctly? Because I know a lot of entrepreneurs never put like their own wage into their business. And so they end up having this business that looks like it's making money, but as soon as you slap like, this is what I should be paying myself, it's like the business is underwater. Yeah, yeah that and was so us. That was, okay. Yeah, that yeah. was we never We never pulled money from the company. When we did when sure. we really needed it. Right. It was but always, the we margins, need to make payroll, we for need sure, to make we didn't, we didn't bake in the margins, especially when we were started to, when we started opening up wholesale, when, when our wholesale business started to really take off with a three-day shelf life, that was suicide. It was you just, a suicide you mission. can't scale a right. business with the three. At least we can. How, how did you guys business. solve yeah. the, the what was issue, the workaround? The shelf life so, issue. At the same time that this, there's a process called HPP, high pressure processing, and uh, basically, I'm sure you've probably, I don't know if you've had guests on here who talked Brooke about has, HPP. Does Brooke do that? She does. Yeah, she, she does. does do yeah, I was going to say. Basically, uh, high pressure processing. It's a process that we make our juice, seal it in the bottle, and then it goes to a third party, where it goes into this really crazy, huge contraption on a conveyor belt. Water. It looks like an oil tank. It looks like an oil tanker, like an 18 wheel. Yeah. <laughs> water <laughs> fills. Right water a, fills like the chamber. Our bottle is sealed, so nothing's getting into the juice. But we apply 87 thousand pounds of pressure on the water. And basically what that does is, number one, it extends the shelf life of the juice without killing, it's a cold water, so you're not killing the nutrients in the juice, but also it kills harmful bacteria like Listeria, E. coli, Salmonella. So the raw juice, we used to have to have a warning label on it that would say not safe for pregnant women, people with weakened immune systems. And that was a warning that you had to have because bacteria could form in the bottle. So by going through this HPP process, now our product not only has a longer shelf life, but it's safe for everyone to consume. I like consume. the visual of applying pressure evenly to an egg on all sides. Basically, that's what it is. You apply the 87 pounds of pressure, pressure yeah. and the, the egg doesn't crack, but it changes the molecules on the inside of the egg. What becomes the shelf life now? Is it like, does it go to like two weeks or what does it go to? At the time we were raw juice purists and we were like, this is crazy. So then we started testing with it and realized it's actually great. The integrity of the juice stays intact. So then we started with a seven day. Then we went to 15, then to 21, then to 30, 45. We're at 90 days. We plan on staying at 90 we days. We could have had it at 90 days from the get go, but because we were afraid of alienating the purists and there is two worlds in the juice world is one, you are either a quote unquote purist where you have your juice bar and you make your three day shelf life juice and you sell it within your four walls. You produce it and sell it within your four walls. Like Beverly Hills juice. Yes, Beverly Hills exactly. juice. Yep. If you have a wholesale arm to your business, you can't produce your, your three day shelf life raw product and sell it outside of those four walls to a customer. It's to, to it's like a wholesale account. So for example, they can't sell that 3D juice to a coffee shop and then have them sell it. So the health department was catching up, you know, kind of like finding out about different people doing this at this It was point a new now. industry. So there was a new industry being created. We used to fall under juice. So all of a sudden we became a new category to the health department, which was cold press juice. And then a whole bunch of regulations kind of but it was interesting, you know, we were in it as it was happening. There were times when the health department would come into our store and we had, at a time we had three stores, they would come in and if it didn't say at the time, we didn't know it needed to say, let's say perishable keep refrigerated or something like that on, on the bottle. They would come in and they would, in front of our customers, take the entire fridge worth of juice that we had been overnight juicing, put it in a black garbage bag with a red tag on it and say, until we approve your labels at the head office or whatever, you can't sell this. And this didn't fall into any kind of grandfather clauses or anything like that. They were just able to make these rules and then retroactively go and enforce them. It was, you know, it was tricky because the rules existed, 
but no one was really doing it. So really, like we would hear about, you know, Press Brothers or another juice company. They had someone come in and they took all their product off the shelf and we're like, oh gosh, we hope they don't come to our store. Yeah. But we were all evolving at the same time. So, you know, it was the difference between raw juice and doing the high pressure processing is that when we had our raw juice, we were juicing overnight, six nights a week. We had a team of 35 guys in the kitchen or people in the kitchen, men and women, and they would juice through the night. We'd have three drivers show up every morning, load up the trucks, we'd hit the streets and start our distribution and take back expired product from customers that we're now crediting them for, so we're losing money there. And then this was basically the cycle. Once we moved to high pressure processing, we would do a massive full day production and then we would take all that juice to get it high pressure processed. And so it was a really interesting time in the industry. But we, it was an exciting what time. What year was this? 15, 16. 15, 16. 16. Yeah. Okay. What started ringing the bells was uh, there was an incident where somebody had gotten salmonella off of drinking, I won't say the company's juice, but, the, but a company's juice that's well known. And, and then the health department, it got on their radar and then just... Everyone was deployed, you know, all the health department people were deployed in their territories, and then they just had to search for cold-pressed juice that didn't have the, you know, proper label. Yeah, meeting the requirements meeting, meeting that the we requirements. had to meet. Yeah, just, I mean, ultimately, they were trying to make our industry safer, but at the time, oh gosh, we were hating it. We were like, it's still frustrating, especially when expensive. someone comes in and clears out your entire shelf yeah. in front of your con- customers it yeah, was meanwhile, really we're, you know struggling <laughs> to pay rent you know and you're like struggling to you know, pay payroll. To rent, rent at our personal house you know <laughs> yeah. because the business was what really mattered you know we were like that's our lifeline and we right had put now. you know i think that's the thing when you have your friends and family as investors yeah and I mean, your own money pressure there it's an added burden it is but what i appreciate is that failing is not an option mm-hmm. and so you have to get really creative with ways to stay alive and that's what we did. I mean, it got really crazy. How were you guys doing marketing at the time? So Instagram's kind of the thing in 2016. And so are you guys doing a lot of social media or what's the, what's the marketing strategy, I guess? Or even maybe you didn't need it. Maybe the juice purists or the people out there in the juice world just... No. I don't. wish we had had it. I think okay. one of the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make or used to make, I think now there's a lot more talk about it, but we would put whatever extra money we had towards marketing which was usually nothing. <laughs> so we You're had- You're gonna say something that I want people to really listen to, because this is a really important thing. Right. All right. Go ahead. Well, number one, you need to invest in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> and we learned the hard way. Everyone would say, what's your marketing strategy? Who does marketing for you? Oh, well, we have a friend of ours that we give him you know, $1,000 a month and he posts pictures on our Instagram. That was it. That was our marketing. And he loved juice, and we just he, we fed him as much juice as he, he wanted awesome, as well. Yeah. Sure. Um, and a big yeah, big fan of the product. And just, but that but helps, that was that our helps. marketing strategy. And you know, I'm embarrassed to say it now, but it's also part of our story. And you know, it is what it is. But I really do wish that. Well, our marketing we knew. strategy. Sorry to cut you off, but our marketing strategy was sales driven. I was was sure. being in the right. Locations, places. the places. Which is that's, smart. Yeah. That's intelligent. So that yeah. was kind of, we're you, like, we're that making, does its own marketing for you to some extent. That's it. Yeah, a lot of eyeballs, to the right day, eyeballs. Yeah. yeah. To this day, we get calls from food and beverage directors saying, you know, I was at Shutters having lunch and I had your juice and I'd love to have a conversation about working with you guys at my property X over here and you know, here. That's what happened with us. So Lexi and Owen, so our social media team was here. They live in Ohio, but they were here. And so we were showing them the studio and everything. And they went to Beachwood Cafe. And that's where your juices are. And Lexi's like, I think they should be on the podcast. And I was like, okay. Oh, wow. I'm like, and she, she reached out to you guys via the, uh, our social media account on Instagram. And then you guys respond. And that's how it all happened. Totally. And so that's how it went. And so when you were coming in today, obviously we're in a coffee shop also. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it'd be great if you had like a, a RTD, the, you know, the, the, right, with you guys. And they yes. were, I was like, would you guys be up for that? They're like, totally. I was like, let's make that happen. And so they become, it, yeah. these things just kind of flower to that. your point, yes, yeah. right? Yes, that's what happens. Um, yeah. You need to be putting out a good product to work with the right people, and you need to be really solid at building partnerships. We built our entire company on those two things, the best product and strong partnerships. And I, I think that that's really what's gotten us through so many of the hard times. We always knew we could lean on our loyal customers. When other juice companies were coming in and saying, we'll buy everything in your cold case, we'll put our product, we'll guarantee everything, everything's on a consignment. consignment, thank you. We couldn't compete with that. We couldn't be on consignment. You know, we, were, we knew the local farms we were sourcing from, so, but our customers would call us and say, hey, just so you know, we're not changing juice companies, but I just want you to know that this is what is happening. Sure. And it was That's so cool awesome. for them to do that. Hang on, hang on. 
If you're not subscribed, can you go ahead and do that right now before we get on with the video? Helps us out tremendously. That's all we ask. And we're back. Do you guys sell direct to consumer too? Like, do you we guys do. maybe like a monthly subscription thing? Exactly. Or, or they can is? go on okay. the website, they can pick one of our kits that we've made, or they okay. can go on and, uh, we've really and make their own. that over the pandemic, which. Yeah. We how did that, to. I was going to say, did you guys boom during the pandemic? Was it. We did. I mean, it's, it's good and bad, right? Boom. Some of the good places, because yeah. they're closed now, and so no one's buying it, in, you know, at like Beachwood Cafe as an example. Yeah, that, well, they um, were shut down. But maybe there's like a, like the way I think about it is there's a, certainly an awareness around what we put in our bodies, or at least it happened during COVID for now some of us. Now more than ever. Right. Yeah. And so then maybe it goes in the right direction. People start saying, oh, this, this is interesting. It did. We grew that business about 500%, which was, nice. which was awesome. But we're talking <laughs> pennies before that. that. Was you the know, smallest, we, e-commerce was the smallest part of our business overnight on like March 13th, 70% of our business, corporate offices. We, you know, we work with some awesome corporate offices, hotels, restaurants, coffee shops, they all shut down. Yeah. So we put all of our focus into grocery store because that was the only customer that was still open. Sure. And Which wasn't a big piece of our business at, at the time. All like we, this is like Brooke and Good Milk. Yes, it's yes. identical. Yeah. yeah, and the next thing you know, she's like flying off the shelves. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we we just didn't realize we were like, great, we're in Gelson's and Bristol Farms, and you know, in these smaller natural chains, and we were stoked that we were in them. But what we didn't realize before the pandemic was that we weren't giving them the attention that they needed, which is merchandising the shelf, mm. running promos constantly. We just weren't doing a the good job and all there. That, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How many forward facings we have? Making you know. sure we had proper representation on the shelf in the fridge, and so in the pandemic our distribution manager who then became our driver because we had no customers to deliver to. Uh, he basically just started going into any location that carried our product every day as much as he could and he would just make sure our product looked beautiful on the shelf. And as other companies couldn't produce and were you know, struggling in the pandemic, he would just keep gaining more and more fridge space, which really did help keep us alive. I imagine at that point, it becomes easy to lean into whatever's working because when everything else shuts down, it can serve to narrow your focus. And especially seeing that grocery stores are the only thing that's open and direct to consumer is the only way people are, everyone's ordering everything offline. I mean, now that I'm curious, now that things are opening back up again and places are allowed to have customers inside, we're mostly maskless now. Have you shifted your focus away from that or have you just kind of redistributed where where that focus is going. We definitely have new thresholds for everything, for every, for every vertical, you know, it's, it's now we just, we say, okay, we can't go, we can't go below this now. We, all, we know what our, our wholesale in general was before the pandemic, February of 2020 was our best month in the history of our company, you know, eight years being around. And then COVID happened. Um, and then March was we the were worst like, this year's in the history be amazing. of our yeah. I feel yeah. like that's so common for so many companies yeah. and so many yeah. people. I'm right there. Was... 2020 vision. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was what everyone was saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to answer your question, we redistribute it now and just know that we can't go below these markers. And we know where we ultimately can take our wholesale business. Which is great because we, with, with some of the, this, the corporate offices that we work with, one in particular, Netflix. They were shout opening out to, to shout out to Netflix. Thank you for if caring. That's a good, that's a good what, partner. You guys, if only all customers partner. could be as much of a amazing, joy to work with as them. With. I've Honestly. heard they're amazing across the board. I mean, yeah, people. I've never heard a negative thing. No, it's, we started their one location on Sunset, and we took over from Suja, which was so cool that we look at these opportunities like a, a starting place. If they're if they're carrying a product like a suja or somebody that's just a lesser quality juice, we know that there's there's an opening there. It's like kind of the eye of the needle. You know, you're like, they want to elevate. They're when already they interested. Try, if they have juice, right. they have we juice. can come in and do They're it They're on better. the journey. Yeah. They're just not, they need a little push to go that's in the right it. direction. When yeah. you try Folgers coffee and you like coffee, you're like, oh, okay, cool. What, 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 what's this blue <laughs> bottle over here? So yeah, Netflix in February had some of their best sales and we knew they were opening up two more locations as well in the coming months. So. The good news is Netflix is just starting to roar back now and the two buildings aren't even, you know, we haven't even started delivering to them. So that's good. So we have some things in the pipeline that are really exciting. But when you talk about 
kind of redistributing your energy and stuff. We, Cassandra and I, during the pandemic, we started, we just hunkered down. We said, look, where do we really need to focus? And going back to, I think what you were going to say before is that we knew that we had to focus on our grocery really like we've had a bit of a, of a, of a difficult journey in navigating grocery strictly because on little West bottles, you'll never see a USDA certified organic symbol. I don't want to say never. Is that because the farmers you work with don't pay for that? That's some, right. Some right. of the farms that we love. But even in, though it's like literally the best as it's going to get, better. they just can't. It's, right. Yeah. And yeah. they don't want to go there. It's better because than organic. This is a common thing. So here in the front, the, the farm cup team, they literally get, it's direct from the farmer, but they don't want to pay for the organic label. And so they just have to say direct trade or something else. Single origin exactly. is something you're seeing. And so, but they're educating the customer on that. Yeah. I was they just, have to. you, you have to create social media. If you're in the know, it's great to see, but most people are not in the know. I would know. love to see. So you're better than come. organic is what yeah. you That's are. That's what yeah. we, let's, let's say that. No, we are. It's a tricky thing to educate on though. And I wish it, that it some companies, and, yeah. and you know, I think it's, it's important for us to continue to educate the consumer. So when we're at a, an all natural, an organic, primarily organic grocery store, Grocery Store Association is funded by Monsanto. So, of course, Monsanto wants the products to be buying into the organic. There's an ecosystem there that are being pressured, so you are being forced into a section of a grocery store if you don't have a certain symbol on it. Why would we be in the you know, conventional section of the grocery store when we are better than organic but in the, a lot of you know, regards? It's, it's us being like, we're better than organic, so, prove it. Well, you so want to come was our difficult, test the soil at this farm that we work with in San Diego? Like, you know, so that was tricky. the difficult, you know, that was, that was kind of the, the red tape or the, the boundaries that we had in, in not being able to, you know, crack through to the grocery store chains and get into these larger uh, all natural and, and organic grocery store chains. However, we went back to, we had a relationship with Whole Foods going back a couple of years before we had rebranded our Which company. We didn't from, even bring up didn't the bring rebrand. That. We, 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 we used to be Clover Juice, now we're Little West. But we had a relationship there with Whole Foods. We started revisiting that with some of our friends uh, with other beverages, this particular guy named J.R. Simich, who uh, has a company called Vive Organics. They do our incredible favorite, shots. Favorite shot. Yeah. They're basically our counterpart. The reason why we don't do shots is because of Vive and, and because, the of J, because of JR. Best in the industry. So sure. he helped push us a little bit through to Whole Foods to the buyer again. She said, look, guys, there's an opportunity coming up. Pepsi just dropped Odwalla. And this is going back to, I think, the, I think during the pandemic, everyone was re- I forgot about them. revisiting. We didn't because we got their shelf space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they they were very good. good. It was not no, a very, it was, it was not. awful. It was, it was made yeah. with concentrates and syrups. And but even like the texture, I remember oh. the texture of that. Like that, that was the one and done for me. Coating your mouth. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, how do people like this? Quality brands were able to get through this pandemic. The brands that were the, like, you know, stand the test of time that people know they want to spend their money on made it through because because they have integrity behind them back to your point of people prioritizing their health all of a sudden we're hyper conscious of what we're putting in our bodies yeah. and all of a sudden we're like oh wait this is a really cr- common thing in our industry most juice companies will list five ingredients on the front and then about 15 ingredients on the back mm. all stuff that you don't know is in your mm. juice because you're reading the five ingredients you're like this is good for me i'm gonna drink or this. a little trojan Kale horse juice, right on the bottle spinach Water, juice sweeteners. not you guys though you guys this not is like guys. what you see is what you get it is fully transparent and that's a big thing for us with our like customer that. education and now that we do invest in marketing um that is an important thing is just to say like we are a transparent company what you see on the front is the same thing that you see in in the fine print on the back and that's important to so us so in november of tw- of 2019 we were able to get into whole foods because of that that's and, great and take the shelf space awesome. from these a few of these companies that had fallen off yeah that's certainly so, a milestone like a nice milestone to achieve when did you guys rebrand 2018 we okay. rebranded so from okay. two, we opened in 2000 why why the oh, rebrand why? yeah uh, clover dairy farms 
Oh. Yeah, trademark. We do issue. great milk. We you know, we do love Clover Did they milk. reach out to you guys? Like you got a, you got a letter? They did. They did. Yeah. We okay. started we did like any company would I mean, young company not knowing we got the trademark for Clover Juice when we started our business. Um, we opened our storefront. We were never on their radar, but the second we started getting into distribution, all of a sudden they were like, "Hey guys, we love what you're doing down in LA." It was a very kind. They were really nice about it. Yeah, sure. But they yeah. were like, "Hey, we see what you're doing down in LA. We End love it. it. <laughs> However, if you ever you start retail, getting into distribution, we will have an issue with it." And then, like six months later, we get into Gelson's and then grocery. We're like, Ooh. They didn't want us to touch grocery. Yeah. Yeah. And That's so, so fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And then grocery saved you. Yeah. Well, later. well, after we, after, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we did, we did kind of face the, do we go to litigation with this massive company as like our small company or do we take that money? And it was, we wouldn't, we didn't know if we were going to win or not. Because it came down to a judge would say, well, Clover, Clover Dairy, Dairy does orange juice. You guys do a cilantro pear, kale, mint, lime yeah. juice. Juice is juice. juice, juice what's the difference? Yeah. This so reminds me, I have a friend of mine who's a, She's a big shot attorney or used to be in Boston. And so in Boston, we have these duck tours. Everybody knows them, the duck tours. It's where like if you win either the World Series or whatever it might be, then they, the, the amphibious parade is in, vehicles, the, right? Yeah, yeah. The parade is in these duck, bo- duck That's boats. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And so there's a company called Duck Tours and there's another company called Super Duck Tours. And so she's at, she's at Wilmer Hill, which is like a very expensive law firm. And they're in court and there's a judge. And she's like, so imagine me, Diego, there's two ducks behind me. And I'm explaining to the judge, this is the duck and this is the super duck. And I'm explaining the differences in the way the ducks look to the judge so that he won't complain about the name, despite the ducks looking very similar. And she's like, that's my life. Yeah. That's her life. Yeah. yeah. Well, she did that for like two more years and left. Well, and so I'll like never forget that. To that yeah. point, so, yeah. to that yeah. point, we were faced with our attorney. We hired a big wig attorney or a firm and they were like it's a 50 50 guys yeah and we're looking at that so being true. like oh yeah. my god i mean so either we spend <laughs> an obscene amount of money right. yeah. not knowing if we'll win or we up. spend the same obscene amount of money rebranding and making all the changes to our company and to our product that we never knew to make when we started because we started as a retail shop. All of a sudden, we're in a cold case with, you know, a thousand other brands or a hundred other beverage brands, and we would get lost. We had a clear label. We, it just, the product didn't pop. We were in a 16 ounce bottle. We ended up changing to a 12 ounce because you'd always have a little bit left. It was just too much. So little things like that, we made the changes. So it was kind of like, we were looking at it as a brand refresh. It ended up being an entire rebrand. But the interesting thing in it is that the company Clover Juice was named after our 19-year-old niece, or she's 20 now. She was a, te- a young teenager at the time. And so we conceptualized this name with her when we were, when we were in a park one day. And so we're like, we're going to call it Clover Juice in Toronto, yeah. And then when we were faced with rebranding, we spent a bunch of money, hired a team to help us come up with names. We went through thousands of different names. We had a two-year-old son whose name is West. And then after going through all the words and all the names, it came down to Little West, which is what we called our son. We were on an airplane going back to Montreal yeah. for <laughs> the holidays, and we were at our wits' end. And every time you do it, you know, every time you do a trademark search, it's like twenty-eight hundred dollars. <laughs> and then yeah. you do the and you do the Second then you do the in-depth is- one that's another, you know, twenty-five hundred bucks or whatever. On, so on the name. here we are. Thirty thousand dollars deep in names that just have <laughs> to make been sure sticking. that we would never run into this <laughs> right. problem again. And so, right, I just Smart. I think I looked over to Cassandra and point. I'm like, let's just put a little, a little in front of West because we knew we little. loved the word West, and the West represented we buy our produce on the West Coast. We just loved so much about it. I mean, that's the reason why we named our son right. West. Yeah, and uh, and Andrew's like, let's just call it Little West, and I was like, I love that. And then we ended up doing the trademark search, and it worked. And then we just that's that was awesome. it. So we spent the first half of 2018 prepping for the rebrand and then the second half of 2018 trying to survive the rebrand the year of the rebrand is there like a 32 ounce called like big little west there is not yet no not yet (laughs) but there should be (laughs) and how old is west now he's five now he's turning six in a couple weeks so um is he aware that he is the face (laughs) (laughs) you know what he's just started to become a little bit understanding it now we we have like you know we have t-shirts like that's mine mine. mine. i think (laughs) andrew had a humble conversation with him yesterday just yesterday at the park yeah (laughs) he was just saying i tell everybody that 
I'm little West. And I, I had, I had to bring them aside for a bit and just like chat with them. And yeah. 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 Little West. Parenting. Yeah. 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 Right. Parenting. You don't that's go so into cute. that. If people find out that's great, but like you don't lead with that. Cause yeah. you know, he's at his preschool just like shouting it off. Totally. The mommy and daddy are going to sell the company and then, you, then, <laughs> then it's not yours at think, all, buddy. And think, then you get, you know, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think you, oh man. Yeah. No, hilarious. Are you guys in that position now where you're thinking of, of selling the company or is it just grow? We sold the company. Oh, you sold it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. When when did you sell the company? Uh, Wow. A couple of months. A month and a half, yeah. six weeks ago. Yeah, wow. Officially. Six weeks to two. So you're months able ago. to talk about it. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. We are. and we're we're so just really excited about who who we've partnered with. And I don't I don't even really feel like it's it is an acquisition. It's a hundred percent acquisition. But we are now very much on board with this. This so you guys are working with the company. We're working yeah. with them. Nothing's okay. changed. We're on board except for two right. years with them. Okay. Ex- and nothing's changed except for basically having the financial backing and the resources and the team and the expert personnel to now lean on and run yeah. things by to actually finally grow the business to the place that we've always envisioned it. And growing line to. extensions now. We've had we've had so many line extensions that we've wanted to do. Very sure. specific ones. You know, we're creatives, so I think that's you know, the thing so that we miss. East, being big little East, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, there we go, yeah. <laughs> well, we do have a second son, and his name is Wolf. And so oh. there is in the back of our mind, like, what are we going to do for Wolf? Yeah, well, what are we going to do for Wolf? <laughs> we'll yeah. see. We'll, we'll figure it out. Can you disclose who bought, who purchased? Yeah, they're called Plant X. Oh. And they're a public company. I know yeah. Plant X. Yeah. You do. Oh, you Sean. Do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Sean. Dollinger. Yeah. Sean purchased you guys. Yes. Yeah. So fucking weird. Yeah. This is, this <laughs> is so <laughs> crazy how you know Sean. So, uh... Sean, I was introduced to Sean or Plant X maybe a year ago. So he wanted to do something in the front here. Like they wanted to do some Plant X something. Like a living wall, a living art wall. And so we, we had all the, I was like, that's great. No problem. That way it helps them promote their brand. And then the coffee truck gets this like really cool Tulum vibe, which is what they wanted to do. This like super plants everywhere. And so we were introduced. I don't know if this is something you're up for, but, and so then we had a bunch of calls with Sean to, to do this. And then... It ended up kind of falling. All the plants you see in the front were given by Plantex. Oh, no way. And so Sean brought those yeah. all. But I ended up having a lot of phone calls what with Sean. What a small world. And when he's in LA, he's going to come on the podcast. We did his podcast together, his like quick thing together a couple months ago. And so, yeah, that's, that's how I know awesome. Sean. That's awesome. Oh, I love that. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. And, and they really, it was great alignment. Really, Cassandra sure. and I, look, there's different reasons why we chose to, to sell and I think just having the support, the financial backing, and the, and just the a team in place, but also, like Cassandra was saying, we're we're creatives, and we didn't want to be on this perpetual wheel of always having to raise more capital for our, our company to grow. And she is an incredible cook and great writer, and so her her dream has always been to write a cookbook. And um, and I'm an actor, so and I have I'm always you know I'm Gemini, I kind of have a bunch of things always going at once, and so I've never really been uh, outside of the first two years, year and a half to two years in the business, I haven't been a hundred percent Little West ever. Well, because so, they'll leave for weeks at a time and then come back, and I mean that's a whole other conversation of like a couple being married and being in the business together of figuring out what our lanes are and, and, you know, supporting each other without squashing and and trying to, you know, we've had a lot of couples on the podcast and it's like some have gone through like couples therapy, at least for me. So Natalia and I work together sometimes. So she owns a construction company. I own my development company. And so on, on my projects, I obviously are hiring Natalia, but in that, like she used to talk to me like a, I don't know, like a peasant. I don't even know. Like she would just be so verbally abusive. And I would be like, I'm not your subcontractor. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm literally yeah. your client. And probably, and like a really good one, like for the record. Like, yeah. I'm like, probably I make your, your life client. really yeah. easy. Yeah. 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 But it took time and we had to build like a system for her to like understand. You we know. could probably compare a lot of notes because I'm the same yeah. way. Cassandra is, you know, A type and just, and very specific in the way she likes things done. I am really all over the place like I you're an idea I'm fragmented person, person yeah, in general huge amazing ideas and then we're all like very passionate so good and then he's like okay but so, now you guys run with it like I, so I'll <laughs> verbal sure. diarrhea it yeah. and then sure. three weeks later I'll say okay so what what where happened with where are we at with that usually <laughs> nine times out of ten she says oh don't worry it's already been act- you know it's been activated and you know there's that odd time that I'm like what what do you mean it was such a great idea and I you know I lined it teed it up for us I teed it up for us and you know but there is definitely a 
the communication aspect of it and also taking, you know, having your ego take a back seat is a really big you know, component to couples just making it through being partners. Entrepreneurs and together. Do you think it's just as easy as, as having a child together? Or would you put them, like basically starting a company versus having a child together? Do you think they're similar in terms of what you have to learn as a couple to That's survive? That's a good question. What would you say? Absolutely. I really do. I do because it's something, I mean, look, having a child is having a child. I don't know if either of you guys have kids, but no, no, not okay. yet. I mean, they're both very unique experiences, but it is because it's just how to communicate. Number one, it all comes down to communication. And when you're parenting and disciplining and, and doing all of that, it, it's all down to communication. So I do think that it prepares you for it. I think there are a lot of parallels for sure. And so, yeah, I do think it's quite similar. I mean, the business doesn't maybe give back the love, but financially <laughs> it can support you. And so, you know, yeah, it's but, not as yeah. cute. but in terms, of, communi- in terms, of, cute. In terms <laughs> of communicating, I think it's really similar. And I think like first step is you get a, a pet together, like get a dog together. And then maybe, you know, we is had that what business. you guys did. You got a pet we together. Did, yeah, we, we had a dog together. Business, business dog. child. <laughs> what business kind of child? Dog? That was yeah. our, I rescued a Husky six oh, nice. months before meeting Cassandra and brought her back to Montreal and and then left and then her left. with me yep with Cassandra <laughs> and I came back and that dog was so disciplined <laughs> she put her through the that is rainer. not what I thought you were going to say <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's really funny yeah her I love how you both Duke. took a breath you were like <sighs> yeah her name was, was like, Duke uh-oh. and she, she yeah. yeah she's a, she's a husky a, huskies are uh, wild yeah. so because we're doing this we're doing this thing with Kat I have to ask you a, a question what was the moment in your business journey where you leaned in and did more? Like where you decided to, to go that extra mile and how did it pay off? Like was there an, a specific instance that you can remember? 2016, we almost closed the business. So end of 2016 was, you know, after we had taken out some bad loans and we were just transitioning into a, a longer shelf life and we were just bleeding money. And we got to uh, end of the year and our controller reached out to us and said, you know, and at this point, anytime Andrew was working, we're putting more money into the company just to keep our employees paid and to keep making product. And our controller called and says, you guys, we, we have two more weeks and, and that's it. We just, we can't keep stretching it. We've tried all the, you know, we've done everything. The money just isn't coming in fast enough to support. And basically Andrew goes, okay, he goes, we're going to stop paying everything. We're going to stop paying every loan. We're going to stop anything that is not our team and our produce to make our product, we are stopping all of it. Which means all of a sudden our phones are now blowing up from people we owe money to. You know, I mean, it was insane. We picked up every single phone call from every single person that ever called us and we reassured everyone that we would pay them back. But that was like, we were like, we have to do that just morally. But at the same time, before we made that decision, Andrew goes, Cassandra, do you think we should keep doing this? And I was like, I just don't feel like it's over yet. Do you feel like it's over yet? And he's like, I don't either. Let's just, he goes, one more month. Let's buy ourselves one more month and just see what happens. And I was like, we just, we need a sign. We need a sign that in one month that we should keep pushing because that's how we had gotten to the place that we were at. And that's when he cut everything off. And we were like, this is totally nuts. We're digging ourselves into a hole. And on January 21st, we get a call from a corporate office that I won't mention their name, but we get a call from a corporate office and they're like, hey, we want to hear, we want to learn about Clover. And this was Clover at the time. And uh, I thought, I was like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, I'll tell you about our company. But because we had built the company from the ground up with him in the kitchen, I did our hazard analysis plan and, you know, we changed kitchens and we did, we knew the inner workings of our company. We knew our farms. This company ended up spending six weeks vetting us. And they're like, we have a huge juicing operation at our campus. We are looking to shut it down. And then within six weeks, after calling the farms, checking our facility and all that stuff, they switched over to Clover Juice and we started doing their juice for them. And that was our sign because we were like, well, if they, with their standards, choose us, we need to stop doubting ourselves in this industry. We, not, we need to stop thinking that we're lesser than all these other companies their who have more money are the than highest us. in the world. You know, and it's so, the largest tech company in the entire world. And so. so we just said, you know what? We need to start believing in us too. And then that was our, our first purchase order was beginning of March and we... Like I said, we took every phone call and, and we just told everyone we'd pay them back. And ultimately we have paid every single vendor back. And we, you know, we have longstanding relationships because of it. 
So. That's amazing. Yeah. That was pretty cool. I love that. That's fantastic. I would clap if I could. Yeah. <laughs> I can, but Nick's going to get angry with the mics. And stuff. <laughs> That's a good story. Let's talk about the sustainability one. Yeah. So I think, you know, one thing that we've always gone back to is you always want to go back to refining your way of doing things, right? And just making sure that you're giving the, the best from top to bottom to the consumer and also the planet. We're big, you know, proponents of recycling and and we have our compost and we we try to have minimal water waste. trying to you know, we're, we're conscious we're, we're really conscious. we try to be as conscious as we can so yeah. there's a c- couple parts to this but when we rebranded we had decided because throughout a year we'll probably have a hundred different charities and nonprofits and things we're giving money to and donating to and so when we rebranded we said why don't we just pick one that we can really make a difference with and so we chose to work with Big Green Learning Gardens, which is a local charity here that helps children learn the importance of eating real food. Cassandra goes with I did. I was doing members. volunteer work with them at the time, and we just decided instead of working with all these other organizations, let's just, we're already volunteering with them. We're already passionate about it. Let's just make it a one-year donate, once-a-year donation So we them. donated 1% of all of our proceeds to Big Green Learning Gardens. And when this became available to us, we we jumped on the opportunity, but we also offset our carbon emissions with EcoDrive. So we plant trees with EcoDrive, another charity that we are working very closely with. And so between the two of them, we've also now started every single bottle that you see here is made from 100% recycled, once recycled plastic as well. Because we are, our product has to be HPP'd in order for and it, it to... And it needs to be in plastic because the pressure, going back to the pressure on glass... Yeah. They can't pressurize yeah. glass yeah. yet, but they they will be able to at some point. But we're just doing all of these, you know, taking all these steps and also upcycling our produce any way we can. So if it's making different products with it, sending it to farms using it at Big Green Learning Gardens to start as their initial compost. compost. Yeah. But the pandemic was something that we had already started working with Big Green, but in the pandemic, we just had more time to think about things. And we thought, well, now that we have this time, how can we be better? How can, be a we a company, how can we as a company be better? And we were like, you know what? If we partner with EcoDrive, every time someone purchases a case from our website, if you have a case shipped to your home or to, to wherever, we plant a tree for every case that's shipped. And it's so cool because it's a visual, it's tangible, we know we're doing it, and so. And we see the numbers, we're, we're in upwards we're, of 6,000, 7,000 Yeah, 7, I mean, we're planting trees, trees in Madagascar, now. mangrove trees, and we're employing mangrove, local, yeah. local villagers as well. And so I think the pandemic gave us the time to think about, are we doing everything we can actually be doing for our company? How many of these do you guys drink a day? One yeah. to two. Yeah, we, t- we take <laughs> home a two. gallon. We always have a gallon of our clover juice in the okay. fridge. So okay. we do do the big Little West, but it's okay. not yeah. really like customer phasing. Yeah, yeah, yet. yeah. So it's like a gallon a day. It's a gallon, yeah. We start every morning with a green juice. Nice. And that's our our first thing, and then. So and then the, the big the big glass of that's probably equivalent to like two two of two of the. No, the your glasses. My, My glasses. glasses yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm still working on this one. I yeah. How and then I have a go big in the afternoon. Okay. I could easily see a market for this. Like breweries have crowlers and growlers. I could mm-hmm. see something like that for juice as well. Yeah, we're working easy. On like it. you could just like you know. Bring your, your growler in for a refill. It's eco-friendly and reusable and all that stuff. And people get their fix. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. What are the things you're working on now with PlantX? Like, so how has that acquisition changed? What you guys are working on in terms of either a retail strategy or maybe marketing? or what, Marketing, what? most importantly. Okay. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, marketing. Do they handle all of that now? Or? Not yet. So we have okay. our own marketing manager. But we are in the process, actually, this week. We are doing a lot of calls to kind of merge that together. Sure. We are spending on ad spends for Facebook and yep. for stuff like that, which is something we never could afford and do before. Yeah. We started doing that um, earlier in the pandemic when we saw that e-com was really one of our only sources of revenue. And so definitely more into marketing, 100%. Packaging, Not going retail, packaging. Packaging, larger formats, nicer customer facing. And then new products. Line extensions. And so yeah. for us, you know, coming out with a larger format is something we've been wanting to do. We do these gallon jugs for hotels or for some offices, but they're not customer facing. They're like, you know, a milk jug. And so we are in the process actually right before we came here. And I, I don't want to say it yet, but it's so exciting. But we are coming out with a larger format that is customer facing can be used in many different settings. And that was a really important thing for us. So we just left a meeting where we're finalizing our packaging for that. We see that there's a, a need for a more approachable price point plant-based beverage. Something that is more water-based 
And so we're very far down the line on water-based product that's not a juice. That's plant-based. Yeah. That has Which all is the, cool. the most of the nutrients you would get in a green juice in a water-based yeah. product. Yeah. Which is exciting because very refreshing and also kind of like the athleisure crowd would drink yeah, it. Much you more know, approachable so. to the average exactly. consumer. Yeah. And I think just shelf stable. That's very smart. For us coming out with a product that is not perishable. <laughs> and that's really like we have a 90 day shelf life and it has to be between very specific parameters of, of temperature control at all times. So for us to come out with a shelf stable product, I'm just like, what are we, what is that? Like a year, shelf, two years? Like <laughs> yeah. what do we even do with that much time? So it's really When you really look at exciting. the water category and how big that category is and now how there's these offshoot, then alkaline and yeah. You know, vi look at vitamin water, you know, what's right. happened with that space, you know, it's just insane. So we do feel like there is a category there that, that is still, that's not explored yet. And that, that we can put our spin on. How many flavors do you guys have? 10 then, total. 10. Mm -hmm. awesome. That was tough. We, after shutting down our stores, we, we had, had like 20, 18 or 20. 20. Oh, wow. And we did collabs. One Custom with flavors. Minotti's Coffee. I don't know if you know Minotti's Coffee. Soho no. House, the, the Viceroy beach. Hotel. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are the are the cool juice house, at Soho. We are not now. They're doing okay. their own juice. Okay. But we worked Sandra with them. Actually, was the liaison to start that whole program. Helping them. Helping, helping them develop their juice. Kick program. us out. <laughs> <laughs> God, I've always wondered because when I get their juices, I'm like, do they you know, know this? Because their almond milk is garbage. Yeah. And yeah, the, uh, juice the juice is done like, out of Miami. I don't even know who does this. I it's know. done out of Miami. Okay. Out of a facility down there. Or at least it was last time we last time. Well, listen, tell everyone where they can find you guys. And uh, yeah, I know we've mentioned it a lot of the stores yeah, already. Yeah. 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 So most importantly, I mean, you can order it to your home through our website, so littlewest.com. And how much is the case, just so people know? Um, usually around a hundred dollars, because we usually put 14, 12 to fourteen bottles in a case. Um, we like to our free whole shipping thing, after free shipping. after hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, our whole thing is one juice a day. We believe like as much as we do drink because it's around us and we're at our office, we drink a second one. Really, if you start every day with a juice, that's our whole philosophy. You will feel the difference. So online on our website and then Whole Foods through the Pacific Northwest region, which is California, Arizona, and Nevada. And then... You said Pacific Northwest. Oh, Pacific Southwest. Southwest Thank yeah. you so for correcting me. SOPAC region. Yeah, that's important. So California, Nevada, Arizona. And then just at all over Southern California. Gelson's, Lassen's, all over Southern California, yeah. really. Coffee um, shops, hotels. And, and your and Instagram. Is at Little West. At Little West. At Little yeah. West. Beachwood Cafe. Yeah. You know, Beachwood they Cafe. were one of our Shout first yeah, customers. Our <laughs> I love, I mean... They're that's just, how we met. That's how it happened. They're still giving back. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I still have to reach out to them and tell them. <laughs> we also were at best. Groundwork Coffee, which is another great oh, partner nice. of La ours. Cologne. La yeah. Cologne it's Coffee. Tempting. They've been incredible. We fell us. into coffee shops because we love coffee. And so we would just be in coffee shops and be like, you guys should carry some cool pressed juice. By the way, we have a company. And so, um, yeah, that's how, we, that. that's, how we ended up, that's how we ended up working with it a lot is, of it cool became, coffee. And it was actually a, a guy by the name of Evan Dorman who brought Stumptown Cold Brew basically to the masses. Like he was the one that penetrated the market down here. He brought from, Stumptown from, from Portland. Portland down to, Cal to Los Angeles. He, that's it. Yeah. And so. He now, he now uh, runs Groundwork Coffee. He had said at the time he was a, you know, purist coffee guy. And he's like, you know, 15 years ago, you would never sell a juice at a coffee shop because people would think that you'd be buying a juice instead of the coffee. So it'd be, you know, pulling sales, pulling from, sales their from their core. core. Product, yeah. right. But everyone knows now it's ancillary. You know, you go into a coffee shop, you get a coffee. coffee. Now, no, no, no product is going to get you away from getting your coffee. You want a coffee, you get a coffee. Because yeah. you're coffee craving for a coffee. now. I do a coffee juice and juice because I usually have a juice for like a uh, snack, yeah. like lunch. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Mid afternoon. It. So I need both. We do it for like a mid afternoon pick me up when you're craving something. It's really energizing. Yeah. Sometimes I bring them to tennis with me. So that way I drink it while I'm playing tennis instead go. of water. Yep. Good. A little more nutrients. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming on the yeah. podcast. It's been a real Thanks pleasure. So Thank you so you much guys. for having us, guys. This is really great. Really appreciate it.